Welcome everyone to our next session where we're talking with Excel Energy Leadership on their digital cloud transformation. Uh, with us, we have uh, a few individuals from Excel Energy and that includes Tim Peterson, CIO and SVP, Tanya Fiedler, Senior Director of Advanced Grid Initiative, Mark Stander, the Senior Director of Customer Solutions, and Jeff Levy, the AVP of Infrastructure and Network. And so today we'll be talking through their cloud transformation journey. And before we dig into some of the questions, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Derek Wise, Managing Principal with AHEAD, and, and I've been working with the Excel Energy team over the past year or so. And I wanted to kick it over to Tim Peterson to give us a bit of a background on, on their cloud transformation and uh, where they started and, and where they're headed. So Tim, I'll kick it to you for now. All right. Well, thank you, Derek. It's certainly a pleasure to be here. Also excited to have members of our Excel Energy IT leadership team with me here today to share more about our cloud journey. Just a little bit about Excel Energy. Uh, we're an, an investor owned utility, about uh, 40 billion in market cap, uh, operate in eight states, serving about uh, 5.6 million electric and gas customers. Our strategy is really all about leading the clean energy transition keeping bills low for our customers and improving the customer experience. But uh, what I would add, and I'm sure we'll get into it more through this program, uh, we really got focused around cloud transformation a few years ago with our customer experience transformation program, uh, which from a business perspective uh, has driven, uh, really intended to drive a lot of customer and employee satisfaction, uh, deliver a targeted 15% efficiencies through self-service, uh, as well as earnings per share growth through increased adoption of our existing, as well as delivering new products and services. But from a tech perspective, our focus has been absolutely on speed to value, uh, building enterprise capabilities and simplifying our architecture. But again, I know we'll get into it a little bit more. Uh, I think we've had some really uh, great successes uh, we've definitely had some challenges and some uh, very good lessons learned along the way that we look forward to sharing with you all today. Great. Thanks, Tim. And, and why don't we dive in? Uh, you mentioned CXT and, and Mark, I, I know that you're uh, front and center when it comes to the technology platform for CXT. And, and, and that program uh, included a big swath of employees from across the organization and, and is uh, a a large effort. My question for you first is looking back, what would you give yourself as advice to uh, 18 months ago? Wow, good question. And I, I will uh, correct Tim briefly. It's been less than two years. It's been about a year and a half that we've been on the cloud journey. Um, it feels like many more years, but um, let me think, you know, the cloud transformation needs to be communicated and endorsed widely throughout the organization, not just the technology organization. Um, we need to understand the value and, and the business drivers of why we're doing it and not only understand it, but communicate it clearly and succinctly to all of our stakeholders. Um, I would also, uh, you know, stress the having the right internal and external partners uh, to help you navigate and um, leverage those partners and resources uh, and make sure that they've done it before. Um, Cross-functional teams are paramount uh, to success, whether it's infrastructure, network security, it's a, it's a village that makes it successful. It's not one team or one person, it's cross-functional. Um, <clears throat> within the organization, uh, within Excel Energy, uh, there's a lot of navigation to go through not only with HR or on the human capital side of acquiring the resources, but sourcing legal and security. Um, you know, discussions early and often with these stakeholders is, is critical. And I would actually stress engage security early and often, and it's never too early and often. Um, another tidbit I have is don't underestimate the demand from the business once you have workloads. Uh, in production and you're making transformational progress, um, the demands will increase and uh, the, the asks from the business will increase as well. Um, have, a, have a plan for knowledge transfer. Um, if resources move on to different opportunities inside or outside the organization, 
the market is still hot in, in these times, um, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, cloud resources are in demand. So ensure that you have multiple people um, that can do the work and you have uh, learners or people wanting to learn on the program as well that, that you know, you have a succession plan. And then lastly, uh, this somewhat relates to architecture, is don't just go in with the assumption that you want to apply all the on-prem tools that you have to the cloud. Um, and that could be antivirus, network tools, identity and access. Think native as po if possible. Uh, use the right tools for the job and don't just extend the tools because you, you have them. Th those would be my tidbits there. Yeah, I, I love that, and and thank you, Mark. And and you touched on a couple of things that I, I want to dig into. First, first, you mentioned endorsement and and showing value back to the business. And and Tim, I'm interested in your take on how has the business perceived CXT and and its value back to the organization. Yeah, it's a great question. I think Mark summarized it well. You know, when uh, and this has been my experience with other transformation programs, certainly with uh, CXT as well. And there oftentimes is this dual mission, if not maybe a, uh, you know, a, a three part mission to some of these transformation programs. Certainly it's to achieve the results of the program itself. So for us, from a customer experience perspective, looking to improve experiences, drive efficiencies, as I mentioned, through the use of self-service, look to, you know, as we provide better experiences, being able to get our customers to more easily engage with us, uh, adopt some of our products and services. So it's really around you know, that first category of achieve the goals of the program. Uh, but at the same time, uh, what I think has been uh, viewed across the organization as a tremendous uh, win uh, is implementing Agile at scale. Oftentimes uh, when you're embarking upon these transformation programs, they can be great platforms in a more generic sense uh, for the enterprise to adopt a new way of working. And uh, that's absolutely been the case within CXT, bringing us a different agile methods and agile ways of working. So you've got, you know, the dual mission here is achieve the objectives of the program, but also start to help the rest of the organization adopt a new way of working, which helps us get towards speed to value. So uh, that's kind of the second uh, part. And then if there were a third, certainly for us with CXT, as Mark mentioned, it is introducing enterprise capabilities into the mix. So we could brute force our way there, get to the results that we're looking for from this program, but how do we know that we've got the right capabilities and assets in place that help us endure and allow us to continue to achieve those results on a long-term basis? So that's kind of that third category of, of enterprise capabilities, uh, long-term benefit. So I think when the organization looks at CXT, and the value that it's provided, it's really across all three of those spectrums. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I wanna dig in, uh, in a, and I will in a little bit here, on the agile at scale and, and the additional demand that you guys are talking about now that you've seen success with CXT. But, but before I, I get into that, uh, Tanya, with your experience in enterprise transformations, there, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be opportunities. I was wondering if you could spend a couple of minutes from your seat, what you see uh, those being for Excel Energy and, and like, like I mentioned, the opportunities that are in front of you. Um, absolutely. So um, I actually have um, just been at Excel. Actually, this weekend will be five years for me. And I have seen an amazing transformation just in the five years in terms of um, the focus and the culture of this organization. And, and if I think about, you know, a couple things that are really critical um, and how I think Excel has been done, done a good job responding. Um, the first is in the area of security. We, um, as a utility, of course, safety and security is like our number one priority, right? We're doing that for our customers, for our shareholders. We, we have to be secure um, with, with energy supply and energy distribution. And so I'm, I'm actually part of a program called Advanced Grid. And we have done very similar to what Mark talked about with the CXT customer program. We have completely embedded security inside our program. And we have support all the way from the top down. So we have um, really high organizational support from our CISO, from Tim Peterson, our CIO, um, all the way through the organization and embedded teams right inside the programs to focus specifically on has been a huge deal for us. Um, 
we are especially in in utility we're merging e and ot technology together and that is requiring much more security focus so i think security is a huge opportunity i think we've we've um, made tons and tons of strides in that of course lots more to go always a journey but i think security is the first one and one I've seen just huge transformation in the last five years is how we focus and think about the customer. You know, we're a utility, we're a monopoly. You really can't pick who you want to get your energy from. But we have to every day think about today's game day. I have to win that customer every single day with every interaction, the way I treat them, the services I provide for them. Um, we have done a ton in the last several years to change the mindset about how we think about our customers, how we um, engage with them, how we kind of, I would say, delight them with new services and capabilities. And in the advanced grid program, we're actually putting a new smart meter on everybody's home. And we've looked at that meter and said, hey, how can we make this meter provide more capabilities for our customers? We can give them more information about their energy usage. Um, we can provide more capabilities for them. So thinking about customer, I think, is the second really, really important area. And I've seen we've made lots of progress. I think we have a lot more to go, like any company. Um, but that's another area of opportunity to really embed that customer focus within the organization. Yeah, and, and I, I'm even thinking about what was mentioned uh, around the demand, and, and I feel like once uh, Excel Energy is starting to get a taste for what cloud can deliver and, and some of the interesting things that uh, you and, and your teams can uh, offer using cloud services, that only generates more and more demand. And, and so, Mark or Tim, I, I don't know if you wanted to touch on some of this upcoming demand that you're seeing, but it, it, maybe, if anything, just touch on the excitement that you're hearing from other business units wanting to take advantage of the cloud. Yeah, I'll chime in, Derek and Mark, and uh, certainly as well. Uh, it is a great problem to have. Uh, and I think uh, having, uh, you know, more work than, you know, we have uh, people to do, or at least to do within the time frame that's being uh, requested. And a lot of that has to do with them seeing, as you mentioned before, Derek, uh, the value uh, from this program. And we were developing a way of working. We're releasing things much faster than we had before. We're provisioning capacity uh, much faster. And so therefore, we're able to move pretty quickly. And I know Mark's got some examples about how we leverage a lot of what we built uh, within the CXT program to help support our EV uh, electric vehicle strategy, which is a big part uh, of our focus going forward. So uh, it is, uh, there is a lot of excitement. It certainly creates uh, stress. And I think as with any organization, um, having good discipline, good governance around how we set priorities, how we make trade-off decisions as an organization uh, is something that uh, we know we have to continue to mature with. But I think there is an element also within that agile operating model when you think about managing a backlog, grooming a backlog, always having more things that you want to be able to introduce into your MVP, but having the model embrace that versus fighting it uh, I think there's a lot to be said around how you can leverage uh, agile ways of working to help with some of the prioritization and the uh, demand management that comes when you have uh, some of these successes. But certainly we'll let Mark chime in. Yeah, so, you know, we, we have an internal kind of joke that um, there were several groups that were, you know, expecting us to fail or maybe not succeed uh, in a rapid fashion. Um, and since that's happened, you know, the demand has increased. So I would say that the two things that we really focus on are the business value and the outcomes. Um, we don't want to put things in the cloud just for cloud's sake. If it makes sense, we'll do it. And so we, we do a, a lot of an analysis on, you know, ROI, speed to market, what are the value drivers? And that helps us uh, decide on the, the workloads that should be moved. Great. And I, Jeff, th this next one's for you. As uh, Mark touched on it earlier, uh, putting together cross-functional teams and and uh, being responsible for infrastructure and, and network, a lot of that comes to you and your group. And and what have you what have you done? What are you thinking about as you organize teams to respond to the cloud demand? Yeah, I guess you, we lay out a, a hybrid cloud vision. Really, you start with creation of a, a platform engineering team. So you, you focus on secure, reliable, reusable environments. You, know, you allow you know, the application teams to focus on building applications and creating that, 
value that they're trying to do with building an application, getting it out to the customer. Um, if they're spending their time trying to figure out how to integrate a security tool into their stack and figuring out how to do that in the environment, they're not bringing, you know, that value that Mark was talking about and Tanya was talking about with, with getting things out the door faster. So having that, that team where they can create and implement and maintain that base network security infrastructure and make that reusable. So as we stand up new uh, applications and new environments or new ecosystems of different you know, streams of business, uh, let those application teams really just focus on that where they don't have to worry about the underlying pieces. So uh, we focus on making sure that all that's available, it's ready uh, as, as the demand comes up. Yeah, and, and then for the others, uh, how have you seen these team structures evolve? I, there, there's mention of embedding, Tanya, you mentioned embedding security and, and now infrastructure and, and networking part of the team and how are they working with the application groups? How, uh, what other evolution have you noticed as you're delivering at scale here? I'll, I'll share one thing I think that we are seeing a lot of success with, and I know Mark is, is doing the same in CXT, is that complete and total tight business and IT integration and not thinking that we're separate teams. And of course, when you're doing Agile, you're in one Agile Scrum team as a combined unit. But the closer we can be with the business and even like I, sometimes on in my teams, I'm not sure whose business and whose IT, right? And that's because they're working so jointly together. Um, I think the more we can be meshed with our team, not worried so much about, hey, I'm in the IT group or I'm not in that group or I'm in the security group or I'm not in that group, but just we're aligned on a goal, a common goal. And we all bring our skills to the table um, to get to that business value solution that, that Mark and Jeff are talking about. Yeah, I'll jump in, Tanya. You know, you can't underestimate the value of the product owner. They will help you prioritize and, and shift uh, when things need to be shifted. So, you know, that's somewhat new in Excel Energy. This agile journey is new for us, but getting the business to actually be part of the team and help drive the outcomes and deliverables based on uh, goals and value is, is critical. And it's been a, a great success, I believe. Yeah, and, and uh, back when we could all work in the in the same rooms together, I, I can vouch that that what you guys are talking about here is it's just not words here on on this conference. It, I, I was on site with Excel Energy for several months, and and it was neat and and really uh, a great energy watching all of those teams work together and and uh, manage their scrums. So, uh, Derek, I, can vouch. I just wanted to chime in too, and this is a little bit of a. Um, you know, it could be viewed as a bit of a, a tactical rule I have, or at least I think about as I, um, as I think about staffing and the structure of some of these transformation teams. I think the traditional model, uh, whether it's an EPMO, kind of, you know, bring a bunch of projects in, uh, determine what roles are needed to successfully deliver them. You allocate out a percentage of some person's time or some team's time. And you get a lot of shared resources uh, that work across uh, multiple initiatives. And, you know, when you're making these bigger investments in these much larger transformation programs, I mean, Tanya's program is close to a $2 billion, billion dollar program, uh, marks uh, multiple hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, that if you put yourself in the seat of a board member saying, I'm giving you this money, I want to make sure this is your, you're not doing this just off the side of your desk. I want to make sure this is commanding all of your attention. You're focused on it. And so one of the rules I, I tend to look for uh, is of the resources, uh, resources that are critical to enable a transformation program, how many of them are 100% dedicated to the program versus how many are maybe are 50 or 75%. And I think you've always got to push yourself to increase that number. If you find that You've got, you know, 50% of the resources or 60% of the resources that are partially, you know, working on the program but have other responsibilities. I mean, these are big bets. These are big investments that have a lot of uh, big goals and outcomes tied to them that, uh, that you really need to think about that level of, you know, that focused, dedicated team that I think is embedded within the principles of an Agile Scrum team. Yeah, that's a great point, Tim. 
to, to be successful and, and what I've seen as well is you, you need these individuals that are part of the, the, the transformation to wake up and go to sleep thinking about ways to either go faster or bring uh, new ideas to the to their respective teams. And yeah, it, that just helps the drive of the entire entire group. So thanks for adding that. Um, shifting gears a little bit over to the, the data side. Uh, the, the data seems to be the, the center of the universe a little bit when we're going through these transformations. And and Mark, I was wondering if you can comment a little bit on on what you've seen in in, um, in, in CXT and, uh, and the other demand for these other cloud projects and, and how data is needed and, and what you guys are doing to respond to that. Yeah, so data, a data lake, a customer data lake was our first production cloud use case, if you will. And it was critical to get the data in there that had attributes that we could join with information that could be presented uh, to the end user via presentation layer. So, you know, a lot of data quality work has gone in, a lot of how do we uh, export or uh, ELT or ETL, depending on your flavor of the week, um, the data to the cloud how do we optimize the data? How do we rationalize the data? And how do we, in an MVP fashion, send only what we need for the use cases we're trying to solve? Um, you know, there's more demands coming, as I mentioned, it's a common theme. Um, working with Tanya, we're just, we've made a decision to move our meter data into the meter data lake. And so now we have customer information, meter information, we can join that data and provide right time experiences to our customer in a, in a rapid fashion and, and scalable, efficient way. So, um, you know, data is critical, data is key, and turning that data into information is really uh, where we get economies of scale there. Great. Tanya, anything to add, not to, not to put you on the spot? Yeah, I yeah, no, I, I might add on, you know, I think both Mark and I feel really good about, this is a great example where one transformation team gets started, another kind of jumps on and really um, receives the benefit of all the work. So Mark's team really stood everything up in customer. Um, he got the team stood up, the structure, the infrastructure there, and the meter team, we were able to jump right on that bandwagon and they have made um, awesome strides. They're just even launching it now in the last six weeks or so and they are going at rapid pace because they've been able to jump on to something that's already there. And, and we can see the more we work together as a team and we build upon something that someone else has already built, the faster we're going to go. And I think this is a great example where we've been able to do that really, really effectively. Yeah, great. And and Tim here, I'll put you on the spot too, is uh, a lot of our customers, they, they, they're data is in their legacy systems and they know they can leverage it in the cloud a touch better or, or they're able to scale it or, or leverage some modern architectures in the cloud. And how would you describe or, or what are you seeing as far as a digital strategy to uh, get the data out of legacy systems into the cloud? Yeah, I, I got to be careful not to get on my soapbox here, Derek, but uh, you know, what I would emphasize is just being uh, absolutely grounded in those use cases. Uh, and there's really, uh, when I think about it, um, there's you know different dimensions of a use case, everything from the source of value, so what's kind of the mini business case around it, what's the data uh, ecosystem, um, you know, what, what are kind of the kind of infrastructure ingredients, uh, the third being kind of what's the, the logic, what, what are the things, what are the manipulations, the ETL, as Mark mentioned, that you're trying to do, um, you know, the fourth component being once you have the insights from the, that logic, how do you insert it into the workflow of the organization? How do you get people to embrace and act upon uh, the data? And then uh, the last being the adoption plan. How do you really uh, get that sustainable usage adoption across the organization? And so to respond to your question, Derek, I think about what are those use cases? I, I, I would absolutely not recommend a build it and they will come approach. Uh, start with use cases, be grounded on value, use a portfolio of those use cases to get to a critical mass. And then at some point you might have to go back in and just fill out the rest of the asset. If you think about migrating to a new warehouse or, you know, uh, constructing some new system where you're kind of bringing data in at some point, you want to 
bring it all in. So you're not, you're continuously going back to these systems, getting piece by piece, but make sure that you're at a tipping point in that momentum, but it's all grounded on what those use cases are. So that's, that's how I would think about um, really the, the transformation and how you leverage data within that. That's, yeah, Derek, uh, that's, that, oh, if I could add one thing, Derek, um, that, that's an excellent point. Um, we had a target architecture to have streaming capabilities built onto the platform. Um, the use cases weren't right in front of us. And so we built an MVP approach knowing that we will be moving to streaming when we have those um, use cases coming up. So we're, we're building that now knowing we will consume it here shortly but we didn't let a, we didn't let that hold up our delivery. So it's all, all about the use case and also where you're you're targeting and going in the future. Yeah, that, thanks, Mark, for adding on. It, it's it's uh, accounting for that future state architecture. It sounds like, and I, I love the idea of uh, driving by use case because organizations can get a, a bit overwhelmed with all of their data and all of the places that it, it that it resides. And you know, how do you start? taking a bite out of that. So thank you, Tim, for that. Okay, well, we'll, we'll glide into our last uh, set of questions here. And, and really, it, it's it's looking forward. It, it's thinking about what's next for Excel Energy. And so we'll do a, a bit of a round table. And, and so, Jeff, we'll start with you. Uh, as you're thinking about the next six to 18 months and uh, how your team is uh, adapting and, and uh, adopting new architectures and, and technologies, what are you most excited about? And uh, yeah, what, what's next for you and, and the team? Really, it, you take the principles of what's happening within that hybrid cloud piece and what we're doing in, in public cloud environments and bringing those sorts of capabilities in-house. So how can we take principles of reusable, repeatable, secure infrastructure that's scripted, automated, that we can build and you know utilize uh you know internally so we'd like to be able to you know have portable you know container solutions whether it's on-prem or in cloud so we have the ability to you know utilize the same kind of set of infrastructure with like a kubernetes platform um, that we can you know deploy those containers and have the same security around there and use a platform capability that's built for that um, that's really our next step in, in really integrating that um, the, the cloud platform team and, and taking their principles uh, across our environment because we don't want to have a group that's, that's way out ahead and then the rest of the, the team really looks at this and goes, well, hey, that's what all the cool people are doing over there is all that neat, cool stuff and I'm over here and I don't get a chance to do that. And, and we want to really... Um, work across teams and, and do all that automation and, and bring those capabilities uh, in-house and you know we can be much more efficient do things faster and you know I, I you know I've been talking about you know cloud is how not where and we can take those principles and, and do that everywhere and, and I think that's where you know we'll see uh, uh, you know infrastructure network uh, continue to evolve and, and move more of that forward. Yeah, that's a great point. We can't lose sight that uh, a lot of our systems still are in the data center and, and we need to think about modernization and inefficiencies there as well. Thanks. And I know a lot of times people talk about, you know, your your systems in the data center are legacy. And, you know, I, I kind of say, you know, legacy systems aren't running your production systems. Those are still your production systems that you know, have a lot of value there and we've got to evolve them in how we manage those. And, and typically systems that become fragile are the systems that are old that people don't touch and are afraid to touch. And, and that's where we've got to really get in there and understand what's going on so we don't have all these fragile systems because, um, you know, knowing, you know, the these are, you know, used in production and for day-to-day -day business decisions and, and running systems. And, um, you know, they're just a, an older architecture more than anything. And, and there's there's ways we can tackle that and make things easier and simpler to uh, manage. Yeah, great. Thank you, Jeff. Tanya, how about you? What are, uh, what are you excited about? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I will, I'll be honest with you. 
I'm not as excited about the technology. That's great and all that, but that's going to be constantly changing. What I'm excited about is what this means for our talent, right? We are a company that is ever evolving. We want, and we're really the success of any transformation about the people that are doing that work and really raising the bar with our teams, allowing people to be continuous learners to grow. I think that is what is exciting. Any transformation allows a new opportunity for learning, which is very exciting. Um, I also think, you know, what's exciting to me is cultural change, right? We have a great culture here at Excel. We're all about being safe, being trustworthy, um, being a solid provider of energy, accountable. Um, but I think that we have some opportunity to say that plus, right? To think about how can we do things faster for our customers? How can we be more innovative for our customers? How can our culture um, take it to the next level and evolve? And I think, you know, that how we work as people, how we evolve our culture. To me, that's the part that's exciting when we're a part of a transformation in a company like Excel. Thank you. I love that. Mark, I'll kick it over to you and we'll finish up with Tim. All right. So I'm really passionate and excited about moving, you know, program capabilities to enterprise capabilities. Uh, the CXT program was a, a trailblazing program within the company, but now it's time to expand those capabilities that we've built for the program to the rest of the enterprise. And we've been discussing cloud quite a bit here, but it includes cloud, data, integrations, DevOps, identity and access, and a slew of other new technologies that we've enabled on CXT. I'm very excited to get these uh, you know, new technologies to help us deliver uh, for customers and internal employees in a more rapid and secure fashion. Yeah, that's a great point. Great point. Tim, uh, we'll, we'll finish with you. And any uh, final thoughts? What are you excited about? I, I think uh, Jeff, Tanya, Mark summarized it really well, but I am, uh, I am really excited for our team and I'm, I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of this leadership team and the rest of the folks that we have, uh, that we work with. Uh, that help make this all a reality. So when I think about the future, uh, I get excited for them. I get excited about them. The fact that we've got this great team pulled together and frankly, really all the value that we believe uh, that we see uh, that we can deliver for the business. So, I mean, one of our goals is, is absolutely anchoring all of our work in business driven outcomes and goals. And I see that alignment with this team and, uh, and of course our business appreciates that and you know they get to experience the benefit of that work and us all working together. So I'm excited for the team and really the value and the impact we can have for our organization. Well, thanks Tim and, and thanks again to you and, and, and Jeff and Tanya and Mark for taking the time today and to, to participate in the Cloud Summit and, and share your expertise with uh, the rest of our customers and partners. So appreciate the partnership, appreciate the time and uh, we'll be talking soon. Same here. Thank you, Derek. Thanks, Thanks. Derek. Thank you, Derek. And thank you, Tim and team uh, from Excel Energy. Great stuff. And thank you all for joining us on day two. I look forward to seeing you back tomorrow morning at 11 Eastern for our final day focused on operations. We'll start off with the heads Ben Varnum on a topic of proactively managing cost and compliance in a cloud world. And then we'll have a session featuring two more clients, United Airlines and Consumers Energy, kind of a, taking a retrospective look at their cloud journeys with a focus on operations, governance, skill sets, all the soft stuff that typ typically gets lost in cloud uh, initiatives. Then after a break, we'll talk about observability in a cloud context, and we'll wrap up our summit with an important session on what it means to integrate service management with cloud containers and DevOps. Thanks again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.